Hi, I'm David. Welcome to 3D Make It. Today we're going to be talking about extruders, under extrusion, over extrusion, and how to fix it all. Let's go! So when we look at the extruder on my Ender 3 Pro, we can see a couple things. One, it's been upgraded to the all metal version from Creality. Two, the filament path is still coming from the top of the printer to the extruder, which is a bit of a problem and we'll go into that next. And thirdly, that I've upgraded the Capricorn tubing from the original PTFE tubing that came with it. So that's why the tubing along my track is dark blue. So those things put together make an upgraded extruder experience. But why do we need to worry about them? And if we're still having problems, what do we do about it? Let's jump in. So let's take a look at this. This is the original extruder that came on the Ender 3 Pro. It comes on the CR10, 10S, Ender 5, and the original Ender Pro series as well. It's a standard Creality plastic molded extruder. You can see there's a bearing, a gear, and a spring. The gear sits on the extruder motor on the top and turns with teeth gears. The pulley allows the filament to go through while the teeth are pushing it. So the filament comes from this side and goes to our printer through the Bowden tube. So this is an important part of the printer, but one of the biggest downfalls of this design is the fact that this spring has no tension control. So one of the first things that you're probably going to want to do is either upgrade to a better extruder that doesn't have the flex of the plastic or get something like an EZR extruder and I'll show you what that is in a second that you can adjust tension on the spring. So here we have the original idler arm from the Ender printer. So you can see that right here is a gouge and that came from filament. So the first problem with under extrusion is the tension of the filament going through the extruder. So if you use, like I do, the system on the uh, Ender 3 Pro and lots of the other printers that are out there where the filament comes from the top of the printer and then down to the extruder, you have to make sure that the path of the filament it has little to no resistance. So on my printer, I took an interesting uh, fix to that. So the fix is something that I found on Thingiverse, but I made a bit of a tweak to it that I thought was better. So we can see here that I've put on a filament guide to help the path of the filament down to the extruder when I'm using the top mount spool holder. What this does is it guides the filament through a PTFE tube and it makes the path of least resistance to that extruder motor. The next improvement, and I've already talked about it, was the replacement of the original extruder, so the plastic one I showed you, to the red aluminum one. The install for that is super simple, and it's been covered a ton. All you have to do is take out the screws around the extruder, the motor will fall from the machine, so be prepared to hold it, and then put the new extruder on top, add all the screws back in, and you're in business. This red extruder still doesn't have a spring tensioner on it. Uh, for example, this is the upgraded aluminum one from Creality, and this is an Easy R. The only difference between the two is basically the tension alignment of the idler arm to add more or less pressure on the filament as it's going through the stepper and extruder. The last thing I've done with my Ender 3 Pro, my CR10S, and basically any printer I own that has Bowden tube that goes from the extruder to the hot end is I've put on Capricorn tubing. Now I've used the XS version which has a smaller inner diameter uh, compared to the other version they do have. There's great advantages to having a small inner diameter um, but there's also some disadvantages. So if you're one of those people out there that hear click 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 skip on the extruder. One of the problems could be that the filament isn't going through the tube gently because the inner diameter of that tube is creating too much friction for the filament to pass through it. 
Now, the other thing that we have to talk about is the fact that not all filament is the same. So that clicking noise you hear could be the uh, offset or the in, uh, tolerance of the filament. So the tolerance of the filament is the diameter of the filament that's coming off the spool, which in theory should be 1.75, but in practice, there's spools that are 0.02% off or spools that are 0.05% off. So you have to watch it. I've ran into this with Amazon Basics filament where it prints great for the first half of the roll, but then the tolerance gets all wacky and it's nothing but under extrusion and garbage mess. Um, so when I switch spools out to a high quality spool, the problem goes away. Now, that problem exists for me because of that XS tubing. The XS tubing from Capricorn has that inner diameter that's slightly smaller. So when the film is trying to pass through the inner diameter of that Capricorn tube, friction again. So the first thing I want to talk about is the spring on the idler arm. So if we look at the idler arm and the spring assembly, we see two things. One, on this red one, as I've mentioned before, no adjustment for the spring. So if the spring is the issue and you need more pressure, you're going to have to fix it. And the way you can do that is print this handy attachment from Thingiverse. And what it is, is basically uh, a washer. It's a spacer. It pushes the spring so that you have more tension on the spring. It works okay. I've printed one in the past. Uh, I've never had a problem with it. But there's another underlying issue with these extruders. So one thing that you need to make sure is that the screw on the end of the idler arm is tight. Because what we do is load and unload filament all the time. And that spring and that screw is getting pushed and released. Pushed and released pushed and released. And so what that does is it act as a bit of a wrench. So it could torque and untorque that screw. So make sure you take and look at that screw every now and again and give it a tighten. And that way you're gonna be sure that the idler arm and the spring system are working correctly, or at least the way they were designed to. Nine times out of 10, that's the problem. Not the spring tension, but the screws are coming a little bit loose. So you've been printing a while, you fix some of the extrusion issues, but you think, man, there has to be a better way than shoving a piece of plastic into the spring. There has to be something else I can do to fix this problem. The aluminum upgrade is great. The red one works fantastically. I've had very few issues with that. But there's other options. You can get Bond Tech extruders, which instead of having teeth on one side of the gear, have two gear teeth. And they push the filament through and offer a path that's forced better through that Bowden tube. Uh, EZR, as I mentioned before, the EZR extruder is amazing. It works similar to the aluminum ones, but they've added a little bit better uh, spring tensioning abilities. Now, when you replace any of these, you're going to have to recalibrate your E-steps. So from factory, your machine should be fairly close. Uh, but what the E-steps mean is the motor turns and we tell it how many times to turn. So if the motor turns too much, we have over extrusion. If the motor turns too little, we have under extrusion. So we're really looking for that Goldilocks situation where the motor is turning just right. So here's how we do it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is run a bit of a G-code command into our printer. So to do that, you need a Octopi setup that can use terminal or a USB connection from your laptop computer that can send G-code through Kira or Pronerface. The code that we're going to send is M503. So I'm going to jump into my terminal and I'm just going to send M503. What we get from the M503 command is a list of the current settings. So if we scroll down and we look for steps per unit, which is fairly close to the top, because here's our command, and here's M92 steps per unit. So we want M92, and we're paying attention to the E number. The E number is what we're going to have to change. So if there's any tweaking to be done going higher uh, or lower, we can do it here. So let's pop back. We're gonna to go to that printer and start the tests. All right, so the first thing is we're just gonna take off the coupler. If you have filament, take it out. We just have to cut it flush. So we use our flush cutters 
and we take that end and we cut it at a nice straight angle. So the next step is going to be putting that filament back in and we'll just run it through the extruder right until it gets to the end of the extruder here. So make sure it's flush. You don't want extra sticking out or anything like that. Just flush. Next step is really easy. You're going to use whatever you have set up. You can use GCO commands, Octoprint, or the control panel on the printer. I'm going to use my Octoprint here. Now we're just going to extrude 100 millimeters. So it's extruding 100 millimeters, so you need something that can measure 100 millimeters accurately. So something 10 centimeters long will do it. If you want to get really nerdy, a decimeter. But we'll wait for this to uh, extrude. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my flush cutters again here and right up against. So I'm turning it so the flush side is flat. And I'm going to go right up against my extruder and I'm just going to cut it. So I'm kind of holding it tight, cutting it, and then I got the same flush piece on the end there. So now we have to take this and measure it. All right, so I've got my calipers out, and it looks like I'm over extruding a little bit. I got 104 millimeters, 0.75, when I was expecting to get 100. So let's jump into how to fix that. So before we get into the fix, it's important to remember that if your filament did come out curled because of the spool, you need to make sure that it's all straight when you're measuring it. So to fix the uh, over extrusion that I'm having, it's a few simple calculations, and it's also um, some G code to the printer here. So what we're going to do is load our Octoprint interface again. You can use Prime interface or anything that's hooked to the printer, but I have Octoprint, so I'm going to go to my terminal. Again, we're going to run that M503 command, and we get the results from the current configuration of our printer. Again, uh, we're going to come down to the line that says M92, and we're looking for that E value, so we need the 100. So let's jump into the calculation, and I'm going to put it in the comment of the video as well, so don't worry. But um, here is our calculation. So to get our new E step value, to correct the over extrusion in my case, or it could have been under extrusion too. Uh, what we need is the current, so that's the 100 that we got from the M92 command from running the 503 command. So that's this value right here. Then we need, of course, our intended length of travel, which was 100. And then we need the actual length traveled which was the 104.75. So here's how the numbers break down. We have 100, which is our old steps. We have 100, which is what we extruded. And we have the 104.75 here. So we take these two numbers and divide them, and we get 0.95. And then we take 100 and multiply that by the 0.95, and that gives us our new E-step calculation, which is 95. So what we're going to do is take that 95, and we're going to go back into our interface here, and we're going to type in M92, E, and we have 95. And then I'm going to send that. So if we look at the bottom, I can see that it was sent OK, it received, and it's waiting for further instructions. So I'm going to do an M500, and that's going to save it for me. And then, just to make sure, I want to run with the current EEPROM setting. So I want that 95 that we just added to be current. So I'm going to go M501. And that just makes sure all the settings that you typed into EEPROM are the ones that the printer is running. And once you run the 501, it echoes the commands again. And we can see here that now our E95 on that M92 line has been changed. So now, in theory, we fixed the problem. So remember, it's M503 to get your current E steps, M92E, then the number to set the new E steps. M500 to save 
the configuration in M501 to make sure that it's using those EEPROM settings. If you don't do the M501, strange things can happen. You can have BL touches not work, uh, step promoters drive funny, you might have prints fail or layer shift. So make sure that you run the M501 command just to be sure. So once you're happy with your e-steps, it might be a good idea to save it in your Marlin configuration if you're running a uh, custom or even uh, a factory from Creality or whoever your printer manufacturer is. So if you come into your Marlin configuration and then you can even just do a, a quick find for M92 and it'll pop down and show you the M92 line. And in our case, we've changed that to 95. So we can see here that it would go X. So X is 80, Y is 80. Z is 400 and then E is 100 and so our new value was 95 and then that way if you ever do have to reflash your firmware you have that value set and you won't have to run through the whole process again but do this once you're happy with your e-steps. So now that you have the right commands and the e-steps in and saved in your EEPROM you might notice still that there's some, let's say, under extrusion on the top of domed shapes or circle tops. Even flat shapes can suffer from this. If you notice that you're under extruding just a bit because of those gaps, you can bump up that E number manually. You don't have to go back in and remeasure everything. Just add maybe two to five more to that E number and save it again and print the model. A great test model to see what's happening is Marvin. He has that nice flat head, a round head, sorry, on the top. And you can definitely see what's going on if you're under extruding on the top. Well, there you have it. It's not so hard. We can solve all of our extrusion issues, if not most of them, before we get to the firmware. We have to remember about filament paths, Bowden tubes, and e-steps, especially when it comes to changing the extruders. I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you've learned a lot along the way. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and we will be happy to answer them. Hit subscribe, ring that bell to stay tuned for new videos. You guys are great. Have a good one.